Hello and uh, welcome to this orientation video for Logic Pro X. We're going to start right at the beginning, just at, just loading it up and seeing where we are. So let's start. Okay, so um, here's my icon for Logic Pro X. I click on that, obviously, to open it up, and here we have the loading screen. And then when it finishes, it will do various things. But at the moment, it's going to ask me what I want to do. So I'm going to start a new empty project. That's what I want to do. Press OK. And then that will boot up this. This is the main page. Now it's asking me what type of track do I want. Now to begin with, we're going to start with audio instruments. Those are instruments that um, actually are generated from Logic Pro X itself, as opposed to audio that you record in from your guitar, vocal, whatever. So we're going to choose software instrument and um, sometimes you've got this open open library i tend to click that off so you can choose it later and uh, create a track and here we have our first track here and it's actually just opened up the retro synth for me which is great um if I wanted to look around, let's have a quick look at the round at the screen. So what we've got, we've got this big gray area here. This is the arrange page. This is where you arrange all your parts, instrumentation, the song from left to right. We've got here, we've got bars all the way along here with the bit, bit beats in between. And um, this will generally just fill up with tracks as we go through. Up here, we have our transport bar. And you can see we've got record, play, stop, forward, rewind. These are all accessible via keyboard shortcuts as well, which you can look up and uh, have a look around. So it says, for example, if you wanted to go to the top of the track to bar one, you'd press zero. If you want to press start, you can press um, space bar and that will start it and stop it. And there's lots of ways you can um, customize this, but this is basically how it comes out of the box. Now, for the ease of what I'd like you to do for this tutorial really is just to create a four to eight bar loop using three or four different instruments just to get your head around what's going on so uh, in future uh, tutorials we'll be looking at how to program drums but for just for this one I want you to just use a, a loop from the loop browser so we're going to use that to st start ourselves off um, I'm going to choose a tempo as well um, I find that if if somebody has started doing a piece of music at 120 BPM, it's probably because they haven't thought about tempo. So I'm just going to speed this up. I'm going to go to 126, which is kind of classic EDM kind of style. So here we go. Here's our loops up here. And um, I'm going to go for a beat. And uh, we've got two different colors here, which is quite interesting. We've got blue, which that represents, that means it's a sample or piece of audio which is actually in a format called Apple Loops which means that it can basically be played at any tempo even though it's defining saying 135 here if I click on this it will play at 126 so they're pretty cool but the thing is they're uneditable so we tend not to use those so all right, stop <laughs> so let's get our beats up let's say I just want something kind of um, electronic and I want it quite intense. And here we go, we've got something. I don't want a two-step thing, and I don't want a sample. So I'm looking for green ones, green tracks, because these are MIDI, which means that they're editable via the sequencer. So let's have a look. Uh, maybe not. It's suitably cheesy, I think. I'm gonna put that one in. So you just drag it into an empty space here. It says there, you can see, drag it. Loops. and that will drag it in and it will also drag in a load of stuff over here which is your um, channel strip so this is where the sound actually comes from this is where you can change kind of audio aspects of the sound so let's just loop that there we go if I double click on a, on a part it comes up at the bottom here and here we have this is the matrix editor so this is where we can edit our individual MIDI notes. So uh, if I click on the keyboard here, I can see, oh, that's a keyboard. That's a, that's a kick drum. These are snares. Up here, we've got a crash there and a kind of low beep down here. So it's pretty straightforward. We've got a kick, snare, crash, and a low beep. There's all this stuff going on elsewhere. Here we go, up here as well. So obviously, I can edit this if I want bit too much going on at the moment so 
so I'll make a copy of it. I'll just drag it over here somewhere, like so. And I go, you know what? I'm going to delete some stuff. So I'm just going to drag a box around this lot and delete it. Yeah, so that's my intro. And then come in. Dun, dun. Okay, there we go. So that's our first bit. So now I'm going to look at, say, adding a bass line. Um, I've already added this e this instrument here, the retro synth. So I'll just use that one. Um, let's just look at how we can choose instruments at this stage. So we've, used, we've got a loop from the loop browser, that's fine. You're not really meant to be using that. I, well, I mean, I suppose you can as long as you edit it. It's just a way of fi finding sounds that are in the box. Sip of tea. Okay, so if we look at here, we can, well, if we look up here, we can see we've got this little uh, library. So we can click on that. And this gives us a whole list of sounds that we can look for. So if I say, right, I'm going to look for a bass, I go, right, bass, guitar, what kind of bass is it? Um, mm, these are all real basses. I'm not really looking at that. I'm going to look at a synthesizer bass. So we go to synthesizer, bass, and then I'll just choose a sound here. Let's see, let's have a look at something here. Uh, divine bass, what about that? Yeah, it sounds divine. Mm. <laughs> Uh, high tech bass. Oh, that'll do. That's bought. It's a bit more my era, a bit more nineties. That'll do. So. record it now i can either press up here press click on the uh, red button for record or i can just press r on the keyboard now it'll start recording in the loop this is the loop here so um you know i can highlight an area that i want to record so i'm going to i'm going to record a four bar loop when i press record it's going to give me a bit of pre-roll which means it's going to give me four beats before it comes in and then i'll start recording and it will keep looping around so make sure you don't keep recording because otherwise you record over yourself so let's have a look two four quantize it now there's lots of different ways you can quantize it you can quantize it from here where I can just highlight the notes and click Q and that will quantize it to 1 16th notes now if you don't know what quantizing is it's basically it moves the notes to the nearest division that you've registered here so at the moment I'm saying that there are 16 divisions in a bar so it will move the notes to the nearest 16th division of a bar but I can change that I can change that to 8s 32s 64s I can do triplets I can swing it this is all stuff I'm going to look at later when we get to the drums which is much more important so anyway I'm just going to um, quantize this I'm going to do it kind of globally by just highlighting the region these are bits here and selecting 16th note quantize and you'll see all the notes slightly change there okay so there we go so now i want to write and i want to create a new instrument now i want to write a new instrument put a new instrument in so i can just press the plus here and it'll create a new track what kind of track do i want oh well i'm going to go for the software instrument and uh, it's empty channel strip <laughs> And uh, here we go. So let's think of something that I'm going to put in here. Let's keep it synthesizer-y. Uh, actually, let's do for world. Let's do something weird. Let's do percussion. Um, no, let's do a keyboard. Here we go. Uh, Afro-Cuban keyboard. Let's try that. Alright, we'll try that. So let's record that. One, two, three, four. Not 
quite happy with that sound. So I'm going to choose a different version. I say, I want a piano. So let's find a different piano. So, oh, look, I've got a whole piano load here. So let's try this. The Bosendorfer Grand Piano. Let's try that. That's fine. And uh, so um, let's just bring that in here. So we, we're gonna, just going to do a basic arrangement. I'll copy that. Alt key on the keyboard allows you to copy things. So what well, I'm just creating a basic arrangement here. So it's going to start off like this. across and then i'm going to bring something else here some kind of lead lead line or something i'm not sure yet so let's, so let's press the plus let's see another software instrument empty channel strip and uh, let's look at another way we can find sounds right because there's lots of different ways you can find sounds if you go down to the channel strip here let me just close this one if you go down to the channel strip and press on instruments here are all the different instruments as they are instead of like the whole strip you're just looking at the individual instruments so let's have a look at the retro synth which is one of the newest synths that comes with Logic. And uh, and if I just go up to, say, leads, let's think we'll just get something mental. Um, electricity lead, how about that? No, rubbish. 50 sci-fi, I'm not sure about that. Um, uh, super lead. All right, here we go. real-time manipulation on the keyboard and we can look at that if we press this little button here the matrix editor and I change the control from modulation to pitch bend and you can see there's my crazy pitch bend that I did at the end quantize ah, this is something int interesting see this note it starts before the beat so I recorded it before the beat starts so when I play it, not playing it that's when you have to quantize so I'm going to quantize these do it the same I'll do it the do it this way I'll highlight these, Control A, highlight, and I press Q. Oh, no, that's called scale quantize, and I press Q. There we go. Okay, so that's basically, I think that's pretty much everything. Let me just look, uh, let me just check. So we've looked at choosing instruments. We've looked at the arrange page. We've looked at looping. Uh, we've looked at the transport bar, how we um, set tempos and all the rest of it. Uh, we've looked at, let's have a look at the tools. So if I press T on the keyboard, these are the tools. And these are all different tools that you can use. The most common one you use is the pointer. But you also got a pencil tool for creating uh, um, notes in the matrix editor, a raise tool, which you use for uh, deleting stuff. But you can also use backspace. So a lot of these tools you don't really use a lot. Glue tool you use quite a lot where you kind of glue regions together. Uh, solo tool, mute tool. I mean, these are all stuff we're going to look at in more detail. The most important ones, I feel, are the pointer and the marquee tool because the marquee tool allows you to highlight stuff outside of a region. So, for example, if I wanted this to highlight this last bar here, I've got my secondary tool, which is the matrix tool. I can press command and that brings up, hold it down. And I can say, I just want to select this bit and then 
cut it if I want. Control Z is also a good one for undoing what you've done. <laughs> I use that quite a lot. And uh, yeah, so uh, you looked at the library, the channel strip briefly, the loop browser, quantizing and basic middle editing, MIDI editing. So if I wanted to change some of these notes, for example, if I wanted to make this note longer, I could just go to the right end of it and extend it. Let's make them all legato. So if I just uh, spun it. So what you should be doing then now is basically looking for a loop, looking for a bass line, looking for some chords, and looking for a lead line, and then just building something from there, and just finding a way around Logic. I really hope this tutorial helps you on your way to discover what Logic can do for you. And uh, if you've got any questions, then you know you can comment me, email me, whatever. Okay, thanks for your time.